GitHub Super Linter allows you to lint almost any code with a single component. Today, I'm going to show you how it works, how to set it up, and how to use it for your code. Let's dive into it. Hi everybody, welcome back to Code Dave. As I've promised in the last video, today I have for you a deep dive into the GitHub Super Linter. To me, it's the ultimate linter because it allows you to lint basically any kind of code with just a single and minimal setup. I've briefly talked about the GitHub Super linter a few months ago in another video I made, but today I'm going to show you exactly how to set it up and use it. Also, if you don't know what a linter is or why you should use one, I highly recommend you to check this video. You can find a link up here and in the video description that I published a couple of weeks ago in which I explain exactly all those things. So first things first, what is the GitHub Super linter? GitHub Super linter is not just a linter, it's a very special one. In fact, the Super linter is a source code repository that is packaged into a Docker container and called by GitHub Actions. This allows for any repository on github.com to call the super linter and start utilizing its benefits. And it doesn't end here, because the super linter is unique. In fact, it supports many different languages. Usually a linter is developed for a specific language, but the super linter supports almost every programming and scripting language you can think of. Whether you're using C Sharp, Groovy, Kotlin, Python, Go, JavaScript, or even IAC languages like Ansible, Terraform, or ARM, or yet XML, JSON, and YAML, this linter has you covered. And the main goal of this linter is to prevent broken code from being uploaded to the default branch, usually master or main, to help establish coding best practices across multiple languages, to build guidelines for code layout and format, and finally, to automate the process to help streamline code reviews. So how does this work, you ask? Well, it's actually pretty easy. As soon as you set up your repository to run an action containing the GitHub Super linter, anytime you open a pull request, it will start linting the code and return via the status APIs. It will let you know if any of your code changes passed successfully, or if any errors were detected, where they are and what they are. This allows you to go back to your branch, fix any issues, and create a new push to the pull request. At that point, the Super linter will run again, and validate the updated code and repeat the process. Additionally, you can set up branch protection rules to make sure that all your code is linted successfully before being able to merge back to your main branch. All right, let's see now how to set this up. But before, I would really appreciate if you can hit the like button below if you're finding this video helpful or you're enjoying it. This will help this video to be recommended to more viewers so they can benefit from it. And of course, it would mean a lot to me. There are two ways to set up the super linter in your project. The first one is going to the marketplace page for the super linter, as you can see here, and you can find the link in the video description and either click on use latest version or select a specific version you want to use. When you click on the button, you can copy and paste the code for the super linter in your GitHub action workflow. But the way I prefer doing it is directly from within GitHub actions. In here, in fact, whether you have already a GitHub Action workflow or you want to create a new one, you can use the auto completion and the helper on this side to add your linting to your action. In my case, I do have a GitHub Action workflow specifically for pull requests. And so I want to add the linting to this one. Let's edit and search for super linter. As you can see, the first one is the one from GitHub. Now you could just copy this code and put it in your action. But in my case, what I preferred to do is keeping the build and the lint separate. So I would create another job and I would add the super linter to it. Just copy the code and paste it under steps. Now there's one more thing you need to do to have this fully functioning and is passing to the linter the environment variable with the GitHub token. This will mark the status of each individual linter run in the check session of a pull request and will give full access to your repo. That's all you need to do, nothing more. Also, since I've added a new job just for the linting, the build and the linting will run simultaneously, saving us time. And of course, remember that you need to check out the code anyway for the linter to be able to run. So let's add the actions checkout on this job as well, so all our files will be present. Let's commit this and see this in action. I've just created this pull request. As you can see, the CI for PRs that we were changing before is actually running and as part of it, also the linting. So let's click on details and see our actions while running. 
As we mentioned before, the Super Linter is packaged as a Docker container. So the first step of the linting job would be pulling this container from the Docker registry and have it run within the actions context. When this is done, we will see our linter running. And in fact, here we are, our GitHub Super Linter is running and it will go through all the files we have in our repo, identify their type and start linting it. And as you can see, we already have some errors in the linting. We will take a look at that in a moment. And those are based on the common rule templates that the linting uses for checking our code base. Now that our super linter has finished working, it's failed. Because as we were saying, when the log was scrolling, it encounters some linting errors. Now to check what the errors are, we can check the log and we can see that it started first linting some ARM file that I have in my repo. And for example, on this JSON file, which is a, an ARM template, it found an error part of the ARM TTK. And if you scroll further, we can also see what kind of errors it has encountered. It's something related to this variable that should not be literal. The API version I use is not recent enough. There is some syntax problem and so on and so forth. And that is true for many of the other errors we encountered. And of course, not only related to ARM, if we keep scrolling, we can see it's linting the bash files or the C sharp files, JSON files, and so on and so forth. If we scroll down to the end of the log, we can also see that it tried to generate the report in the super linterreport folder, which in my case does not exist. So if you have that folder, you can also see the complete report as an output file rather than in the logs. If we go back to our actions workflow overview, we can see that all the problems that the linters found are also reported here for easier reading. So it's very easy, it's very immediate for you or for any developer, go here, see the problems and fix them. Now that we have the GitHub Super Linter set up and running, let's take a look at how we can customize it. We will see how to use the environment variables, the templates rules files, and also how to use your own rules files. As we've said before, we use the environment section of the Super Linter action to pass the GitHub token, which is needed for full access to the repo. This is the same section in which you can configure a lot of other environment variables to customize the behavior of the GitHub Super Linter. For example, let's say that your default branch is different from main. What you would do is adding here this default branch environment variable with the name of your default branch. This will tell the linter to use that branch as default branch. Or let's say that you want to have your file linted, but you don't want your CI or your PR to fail because of the linter, which is, as we've seen, the default behavior. What you could do is using the disable errors environment variable and set it to true. This way, your CI will not fail even if the linter will encounter some problem or some linting errors. I would not recommend doing so, but if you want, you can do it. As we've seen before as well, the GitHub Super Linter tries to create a status report when it finishes its job. And it tries to create it in the super-linter.report folder. However, you can customize that as well. For example, you can use this output underscore folder environment variable and set it to whatever folder is present in your repo. And still talking about report, maybe you want to change the details of your report. By default, this is set to simpler, which is a somehow useful, but not very in-depth level of detail. You can change this to detailed to have even more information. A very useful customization, especially if you have big repos is to be able to restrict what the linter will work on. By default, the linter will parse and lint your whole code base, your whole repo. This is okay for smaller repos, but if your repo is very big, will take the linter long, long time to finish. To avoid that, you can use the validate all code base environment variable and set it to false. Doing this, the linter will parse only the new or edited files that are part of your PR or of the commit. And again, this is pretty useful. By default, the linter will try to validate and lint all the known kind of files. 
But if you want to restrict that, you can use validate underscore variable. Let's say, for example, that you don't want to validate your ARM files. You just use the validate underscore ARM and you set it as false. This will validate everything else but the ARM files. And you can do the same with basically every other language. Just add the validate underscore and the name of your language and set it to false if you don't want the GitHub Super Linter to work on those kind of files. Finally, I want to mention something related to rules. We will talk about custom rules in a second, but if you have any custom rule file that you want to use, you can just add the specific environment variable for your language, like in this case, for example, for markdown, will be markdown underscore config underscore file, and set here the path to your rule file. And again, I use markdown as an example, but this applies to basically any other language. Just use the language underscore config underscore file syntax and pass to it the path of your file. There are many, many other environment variables that you can use, too many to be all listed here. So if you want to see more about this, I encourage you to go to the GitHub Superlinter repository. You can find the link in the video description. Let's move to the rules. You can use the GitHub Superlinter with or without custom rule sets, which means that you can use with the embedded ones, or you can create your own template and rules files for use with greater flexibility on any code base. To use the default GitHub provided templates rules files, you can copy any or all template rules files from the templates folder of the superlinter repo into the folder.github slash linters of your repository. But if you don't want to do that, so if your repository does not have rules files, the superlinter will just anyway fall back to the default rules contained in the templates folder. You can, of course, use these templates files as a base for creating your own rule sets. And as we've seen before, using the environment variables, you can also specify a different locations for your own custom rule sets if you don't want to save them in the templates folder. There is a ton of other customization that you can apply to the GitHub Super Linter using flags, files, etc. And it's much more I can cover right now. But if you want to see that, just follow the detailed instructions you can find in the GitHub Superlinter repo and the GitHub Superlinter wiki. You can find the link in the video description. It is also possible to use the GitHub Superlinter outside of GitHub, for example, in Azure, Azure DevOps, GitLab, and even locally on your machine. So let me know in the comment section below if you want me to make a video about how to do all those things outside of GitHub. Let me also know what you think about the GitHub Super Linter. I really love it and I'm using it basically in any and every repository I have. Lastly, remember to check this video over here to know more about linters. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave.